Hey guys, there is an Ender 3 version 2 behind my back, just there. I've recently reviewed that, so if you're interested in that, just take a look at the video there and you'll see a full review and what do I think about it. But today we're going to add this and this is Creality's BL Touch module to ease the leveling procedure. My original Ender 3 already has a BL Touch and I'm taking advantage of it. But I'm pleased to say that it's actually it's been so much easier to add BL Touch to Ender 3 V2 than to the original Ender. But before we get started, in case you don't have a kit like this right now, BL Touch is not going to remove the need for bed leveling. You'll still have to level the bed, but you can get a little bit less precise and more sloppy. If you don't have a kit like this, you can get one either for Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2 from the description of this video. However, if you already have one in your hands, just make sure you have a correct kit for your printer because they differ slightly. Now, for the most part, the BL Touch is the same. It's just a bracket that is different. So if you already bought one and it's not for the correct printer, well, you do have a 3D printer, there is a Thingiverse, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna find something to make it work. With that said, let's get started. Inside the box you should find the usual instruction. Obviously some spare tips and screws and a long enough cable. Let's hope that's going to be long enough. This is under 3 v 2 a bracket and obviously BL touch. Now first of all we have to take care of Z-stop. You are not going to need it when you're using BL touch. So unplug it, remove it and store it securely. It is entirely possible to mount the bracket upside down, so pay attention to the orientation. If the tip of the BL touch is shorter than the nozzle, you did it upside down. I did that first time around, so don't make my mistakes, please. I also found it easier to mount the long screws to mount the bracket first and then add the BL touch with the short screws. Make sure everything is nice and fit in place. Now root the cable, make sure the cable goes where it's supposed to go and uncover the motherboard. There's a one screw at the top and three screws at the bottom of the printer. Be gentle, remove the cover very carefully because there is a fan attached and you don't want to cause any damage. Locate the BL touch socket, which is white. Take the note of the revision of the motherboard as you're going to need it later. And locate the Z-stop. Manage your cable and unplug the Z-stop cable as well because, well, we're not going to need it. There's a trick, you can just uh, remove front screws and that will leave a gap big enough to root the cable and get rid of that Z-stop cable. Now you're ready to reverse the process, close the enclosure. Just make sure you put the right screws in the right places, connect the fan and uh, don't forget the screws on the top. Now go to Creality website. And remember, when I ask you to check the revision of the motherboard, it matters now. Download the firmware with the correct revision for your motherboard and put it on SD card. Flashing couldn't be any easier, just put the card in and restart the printer. It'll take about 10 to 15 seconds, but you'll see a new menu available. That means that the build touch is up and running. When you're homing the printer for the first time, keep your fingers around the power off button just in case things go wrong. When homing is complete, don't level bed just yet. Take the measuring tool and measure the distance between the nozzle tip and the BL touch tip. To calibrate the probe Z offset correctly, you want to move the nozzle to the same position when the probe was just a moment ago. Now lower the nozzle to a zero level and check what should your offset be. It's a bit of a guesstimate, use your piece of paper and you should uh, aim for about a 0.2 millimeter between the nozzle tip and the bed. Repeat the process each time until you get correct bite, adjusting the offset as needed. Negative values will cause the nozzle to go down. When you're satisfied, you can level the bed and move to Cura because there is a couple of things that we have to add into your slicer. I'm using Cura, so go to Manage Printers, click on Machine Settings, and then add two lines of the code G28 and G29 to level the printer bed. While running Build Touch is cool, especially if you're running Octoprint server, it is introducing another thing to monitor, which is the Z offset. Now, there's a couple of scenarios where you should recalibrate the Z offset and make sure it's spot on. And that includes hot end maintenance, changing nozzles, 
obviously changing the tips of, on the BL touch itself and approximately every three to four months just to make sure that the wear on the probe isn't affecting the offset. Fortunately, this only applies if you're really going to mess around hot end. So if you are changing a filament or changing the bed surface, you tensioning the belts or doing all the maintenance work that does not affect the relationship between the nozzle itself and the tip of the BL touch, you don't have to recalibrate it and just you can leave it as it is. Right guys, I hope the installation was quick and uneventful and you're gonna enjoy your spectacular print on your new Ender 3V2. As usual, I do not have a posting schedule, but if you want to see me trying to convert that into a filament runout sensor, because it's a spare part and why not, it's best to follow me on social media to get a notification whenever a new video or article is up, because I also do articles without videos, because, well, reasons. As for now, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.